Right, hi guys, I'm Tom. I'll be talking tonight, obviously. A quick question first. Are you all artists or, well, who's who's an artist producer here? Perfect, so most of you. I know, is anyone look, wait, working in events or looking to put their own events on? Yeah, cool. Just so I know what to talk about as, as we're going through. I run a company called NYX Agency. Um, we're a 360 degree marketing company. What that means is we help our clients engage with their fans at any point they consume. So help communicate things, how to sell a record, how to sell an event out, or also that could be how to grow my profile. We work across any communication pathway. So that could be TikTok, Instagram, could be Telegram, WhatsApp. Basically, if there's enough people there to engage, we'll, we'll build a pathway to communicate. So this is some of the artists and labels that we work with. So Adiel and Fisa, uh, Francesco Tristiano is a pianist but it's mainly in the underground uh, music space. We also do labels uh, and festivals as well, so Caprices, Extreme Outdoor, Terminal V, but it's, it's the full spectrum, anything in the counterculture space. So I'm gonna start with branding as an artist um, or, or a label or a festival. Branding super important. Branding is how people identify with you. It's important you get this right because this builds the narrative when it comes to your marketing as well. If you start out with a good brand, a good Bible, like build a brand Bible, it gives you the guidelines for how you create that social schedule or market your record. I would say it's the most important thing and the most underdone thing for anyone, even big artists fail to do it properly. But if you set out and get this groundwork right, work with a creative agency or a creative person, get it written down, get the rules there. It makes a hell of a difference to how you market yourself. When you're scratching around trying to work out a post, which we all have to do, this can give you the guidelines for that. It can give you the narrative to talk about. And if you understand your own brand, it's much easier for people to understand you when they're watching you as well or looking at you. If you don't know who you are, how can someone else buy into what you're doing? So it's really important to establish that brand. Why is it important? Well, it increases brand recognition. It improves customer loyalty, positive word of mouth marketing. People can talk about you, they can reference you and it reduces price sensitivity. So that, that can be coming to record. If you build yourself as a high end brand, you obviously can like charge more for a higher ticket price, whatever that might be. To use the example there, Amelie Lenz versus Fisher. There's no right way to how you brand as well. It's important how you brand yourself, that you believe in what you're doing. Fisher and Amelie are two very different artists but they both have a strong brand identity and people can buy in what they do fish is the funny guy but that works for him he's at the after parties but it, it works amelie is a bit more straight edged cleaner profile but again it works both of them are doing well both successful so what is social media and why do we do it it's essentially your shop front it's the same as being on the high street it's what the old high street was you'd walk past a shop see something decide to go in and buy that's what social media is now. It's your shop front. It's how you engage with your fans. It's the first thing they see of you. So it's important we do it right. And it's important you use the right platforms to do that. So which platforms are there? There's multiple platforms that you can use. Instagram, TikTok, Spotify, SoundCloud. It's important you use the right one for you. Don't feel you have to be on every platform. It's more important you put consistent content out on the right platform for you than trying to do things that don't work. You just become stressed out. You, you, you fail to do it regularly. And that, that looks bad in itself. When we're talking about perception, that is, is how people look at you. It's not good to have inconsistent profiles. You're better off focusing on SoundCloud if that's what you're good at. If you wanna be on Instagram, focus on that. Don't feel like you have to be on every platform all at once. You're better off nailing it down than moving on to the next. So what platforms are you guys using at the moment? All Instagram. Is there a reason why you use Instagram more? So an interesting example or thing to think about there is TikTok is actually the only platform designed for music artists. It's a music platform. It's being rebuilt to be a, like a record label in itself. They want to sign music on there. They want to release music on there. So that that's something to just think about when you're, you're choosing your platforms, right? That's nothing to discredit Instagram, by the way, obviously. It's an important platform. This is where you need to think about what you what you want to put out and how you put it out and where you put it out. Certain platforms have certain advantages for certain things. Obviously, you can't put a mix out on Instagram or TikTok. 
So you need to look at a mix, uh, mixed cloud, Spotify, SoundCloud, whatever that might be. So it is important to choose the right platforms for you. One of the things is how, when you're choosing that and how you're doing that, it depends on the content. For me, and when we're working with our clients, we try and put unique content on each platform. And this is important as well. If you've got a TikTok and an Instagram, don't put the same content on there all the time. Because why would your fans move from Instagram to look at your TikTok if it's just the same thing they can see there? or vice versa. You should try and make bespoke content for each. That doesn't mean you have to always have new content because it, it's hard to come up with new content every single post and like doubling that up to do Instagram and TikTok unique each time or TikTok and Spotify, whatever it is. But really important to have unique content on each platform. One of the things we do a lot with our artists and brands that we work with is we'll, we'll post something unique on TikTok, let's say, to use that example. But then on our Instagram stories, there'll be something leading people to TikTok. So this is the only place you can view that or YouTube shorts or YouTube. That way you can move your fans or your, your followers or whatever you want to call them around platforms. And you start to build that community there in different places. If you're a producer, maybe on TikTok, you have uh, your track breakdown or how I made this record, whatever it might be. So on Instagram, you tell your followers, if you want to see how I made this track, go to my TikTok, then they're getting a unique experience there. And that's where you'll see your, your TikTok grow alongside what you're doing elsewhere. If you keep the content the same on all platforms, you only see growth in, in one place. And I think that's really important to try and vary the content where, wherever you can. So yeah, what platforms are best for, best for you? Um, I've kind of started to touch on that, but it really does depend. As I've mentioned, there's Instagram is probably the one at the forefront of what Everyone's talking about, you've all mentioned that. But we were talking just before about age demographics. There's definitely a younger audience on TikTok, right? Sometimes people say, do I want to engage with them? Might not be musically mature, whatever the, the conversation is. But you've got to think as a long game, there seems to be a transition and we're seeing it. Pretty much every conversation I go into, whether it's an existing client or a potential client, is around new platforms whether that's TikTok, Discord. They're, these are all conversations. You've got to be looking at these future-proof platforms. And something I was talking about the other day with someone. So YouTube 2005-ish, loads of artists blew up because they were the first people in the algorithm. Then Instagram, a few years later, loads of artists blew up because everyone, they got used to the uh, algorithm. TikTok's the, ne the next one, right? That's the next place a whole group of artists are going to blow up because they nail the content, nail the algorithm. That's not to say you can't get big on the other platforms, but that's just something to bear in mind. Look at these new platforms, Discord, Telegram, they, they can all work. And something else to think about, how can you get the most out of them? With Amelie and Exhale, we have a Facebook group. This is where we have a community. So the way we set that up is we went and got Amelie's, a list of Amelie's biggest super fans. We asked them to, if they wanted to be the admins of this group, they now run the group for us. Interestingly, they know about things before I know about it. I don't know how that happens, but they basically leak it. We leak information to them. They'll post it in the group and it's fan led content, fans engaging. Um, so we use that group as a community base. That's how we kind of navigate Facebook. But then we have a tele uh, telegram group, which is one way communication. That group is for like important info. So we built that on the concept of the old rave hotlines. So when raving first started, call up a number, you'd find about out where the party was. So for Exhale, it's the 0800 rave hotline, but it's a telegram group. So it's the only place you can find out about the after party, pre-party or like special events, particularly when we're doing our residency in Ibiza. But this is it. Use the platforms in different ways. Try and be creative with them. And then people know to go to them for certain information. I think that's really important. So how to get the best out of Instagram? You guys mentioned that's sort of the, the platform of choice. So there's a few things here and I'm gonna to skip to the next slide just so you can see it and read through it. We, had a, we have a chat basically once a month with Meta and they kind of give us advice on how things are working. They never tell us exactly how it's working because they don't like people to know, but you kind of push them and bend them around a little bit and they, they give you hints. So this algorithm scores, this isn't, completely like exact, right? This is what I mean. They don't tell you the full truth, but to give you an example, if a like is worth one point, 
um, a share five points, a save three points, whatever, right? Different actions give you a different score. The higher that score, the higher your visibility in the feed. So next time you post, there's different ways of improving your engagement, right? One of the big ways is through stories. It's hard to have a good post every single time. Don't feel you have to post every day. That, that's a myth. You're better off posting once or twice a week something really sick than you are posting four or five average posts. That's the truth. Like It's better to do less, less is more here and doing more like better things. But to keep active during that time, a really important thing to do is stories. Use the, like, the slider tools, use the Q&A boxes. They're designed to be one, one click actions for the user. So that means they can engage with you without having to even think about it. So it's, like, you could put a video up of you DJing or playing the club, slide above with the flame emoji. When you do that, right, if people engage with you, it gives you a score. They're, they're gonna then see your next post. So next time you post to the feed, you've already increased your visibility. So you'll see if you look at certain artist profiles, um, the ones we work on in particular, I know it happens. For example, Exhale, we'll do a lot of stuff on stories um, throughout the, the days we're not posting, but there'll be, we'll, pose, we'll pose a question on their Q&A box maybe. People start engaging it. People also like to do that because other people don't see them engaging. People get a bit of social awkwardness, don't necessarily like to always see comments or whatnot, but they can do this in, in the background. So it's a really nice way to engage with people without putting the pressure on them. Also taking the pressure off of you as well. You don't have to reply to every message in that Q&A box, but people are messaging and engaging with you. Something else you can do as well, and we do this a lot with the artists we work with, if you're going to a country you've never been before, or you want recommendations on new tracks, it could be anything. You can post a story, hey, I'm in, it, in Rome, where should I go for dinner? or any record stores around, or what tracks are you digging at the moment? These are all easy questions that people answer like that. People are bored, they sit there, they answer that in two seconds, yeah? So that's really easy way to get those scores up and start pushing your profile and building it out. Talking of reels, everyone's kind of seen the shift. Everything's video now, right? Big shift, there's that whole kind of uproar Instagrammers turning to, to TikTok. They came back and said that wasn't happening. But as you see, like reels are still important. Really important thing about reels is the only thing on Instagram shown all over the platform. So it's also shown on Facebook. It comes up in the explore page. Um, it's also the only post that's shown to non-followers. So people that aren't following you will see, well, or can potentially see your reel. If you post a picture or a carousel, it's only shown to people following you unless obviously someone shares it, right? So if you're trying to grow new followers organically, Reels are an important way to do that, but don't just rely on Reels. It's really important to use all the functionality of the platform. So carousels are great for organic engagement. They're shown multiple times to people in the feed. If you post three pictures, they'll see the three pictures, right? There is a limit to that. If you post 10 pictures, they don't show all 10 in the feed, right? But it'll show your, your same post three times. So great for organic engagement. But Reels, that's great for growing your followers. Other things as well, so I've mentioned the polls and the stickers, quizzes, whatnot, but um, use location tags. You, those are really important. That's another way people can find you. If you, if you played your first gig at Phonox or wherever it might be, you tag Phonox in it. When other people search Phonox, your content's gonna appear. It's a great way to catch in, and, and connect with people in your same sort of areas and zones. Hashtags, people always ask, are they important? I don't think, and I don't see any advantage in putting 40 hashtags or even 20. You know, you sometimes put a block of them underneath, not that much advantage to it. You're better off, I always say, having one hashtag relating to you that you put always on your posts. As you grow, it's a way of people like finding all of your information. So that could be your artist name, it could be a, a phrase, whatever it is. That's good just to keep all your content in one place, but hashtags do appear on Google searches, right? So if you use the right hashtag, it's another way again of people to people to find you. But using a hashtag like hashtag techno, every person uses that as well. So you need to kind of find a balance of a hashtag that's not that is popular, but also not oh, like saturated, because that that's not also useful. But on Instagram they're not as important as they are on TikTok, but I'll get into that shortly. So creating unique content, 
I think it's just something people struggle with. How how do you find creating content? Mixed bag. <laughs> we we kind of touched on this before everyone came in. We we're having a little chat about this. But content content's important, right? People quite often say to me, like, have I been shadow banned? Have I um why are people not engaging with my content? The truth is, most often it's because the content's rubbish. People actually see everything. I like I know for a fact I'll scroll through the feed. I only like the things that I think are really good. I do I do see everything, right? And I think if you look at your own habits when you're going through a feed, you'll think, actually, I, like, there's a lot of things you do see that you don't like. And I think that's important here with creating the content. If you don't think it's interesting yourself and you wouldn't, if your friend posted it and they, you wouldn't like it on there, probably not worth posting on your own feed. Don't post just for the sake of posting. And I think when it comes to like releasing a record or you've got your party coming up, whatever that might be, think about the narrative that you're trying to tell. And this is where the brand Bible and the branding comes in as well. Creating that narrative is really important and that will help with creating unique content. But if you're someone that loves analog gear don't and you don't like posting selfies to your face, don't feel that you need to post those to selfies just because that's what other, another artist does. Talk about the analog gear. If that's what you feel comfortable doing or you're a producer, just focus on the things that you like doing you'll find it much easier to create content based on that. Don't feel that you have to do what others are doing though. If you're a producer and you struggle to make content, one piece of advice I'd give, buy a GoPro. When you go in the studio and you're there for eight hours jamming away, just flick it on. Let it record what you're doing. You might get some funny moments where you fall off your chair or you're picking your nose. Those actually could be the bits that you put on as well, the outtakes. Once a month you do your outtakes from the studio. That could be a nice piece of content. You could also then get your studio jams out of that and whatnot. Do the stuff that you're comfortable with. It'll be much more easier to, to create the content that you like. I personally feel, and like I, I can't back this up with like hard facts, but we've, we've seen and we try and track this. Quite often when we post, for example, a phone recorded video against a professional camera, actually it's the phone videos that do better. Quite often, um, to use Amelie Lenz as an example, we, would, we tracked all of her posts and it was actually the phone videos that were doing better and the ones that were going viral. My hunch, as I say, I can't back this up 100%, is the high-end, more edited stuff almost feels salesy. It feels like you're about to sell something. So it, again, this all depends on your narrative and who you are, right? My, my gut feeling is the, f the phone stuff is actually a bit more raw. People feel like they're there in the moment, almost like they filmed it themselves, which again can help people to engage with what you're doing. Really important. If you're going to post a video on Instagram, use the native text on Instagram. One of the things we've started doing now is like we'll edit the video together before. But then if we're going to add text or information to a video, we'll actually do it using the Instagram or TikTok app. This is really important because same with Facebook. They used to do that years ago, but it's still a thing. Like 80% of an image can't be text. They feel that that's a sales thing and they'll reduce your reach. It's actually the same thing with your videos. If you start putting text in there, these AIs are so good at picking it up. Whereas if you use their own native text, Instagram, like, well, you're using our stuff, it's fine, go for it. Or TikTok's the same. And that also leads to the point, don't just post your, like, share your TikTok video with the TikTok logo to Instagram or vice versa. They hate that. They know when you've got someone else's logo on the video and they don't like that either. So, like, you should take the raw video and upload them separately. Don't just share them straight across. They, they really don't like you promoting other people. So it's something we do um, as a company every Monday. It's called Inspirational Mondays. Basically, everyone has to bring in two things that they've seen online that are not music related that could be used in a music setting. So this video here, um, essentially what it is, is LeBron James commentating over something he scored, right? Um, and it's, so he's been asked by the press, he's in the press comments talking about it. So as a, we, someone brought this in who works for me, he said, well, maybe way, the way we could use this is you put the artist, a video of you playing your track to the crowd. So the, we did, actually did this for an artist. So they're playing the track at Park Life in Manchester. First time they played it underneath, they were sat in their studio reminiscing about this time. So they were talking about it whilst you watching the video. So they were like, ah, oh, the guy in the front had his top off, he was swinging it around his head. As it, as it came to the drop, everyone started whistling. And like you can see this in the video. That's a really nice, unique piece of content, right? And we've taken the inspiration from the NBA. The NBA is actually a great place to go and look at content. 
their social media teams are the best in the world. Go look at these, go to other places and look at how you can repurpose content in a music sense. You'll find a lot of stuff outside which no one else is doing. And then you quite like create a unique sense of um, your own content. But that's something I'd really recommend. Look at, look at other places to take uh, inspiration from, not just the music scene, because these big companies, they invest a shit ton of money in these platforms and trying to get the content. So there's always lots of ideas there and it's worth digging and, and having a look at that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna go on to TikTok for a little bit here because I do think it's important. So this is the numbers we've done in the last three months across four accounts. Two of the accounts were on zero when we started. Uh, one of them was on 30,000. So three accounts were on zero and one was on 30,000. We've done 1.5 million views, uh, reached 1.165 million people. This shows you the power of TikTok if you get it right. Something really important I think everyone should do, even if you're not on the platform yet, you can sign up to the newsletter, TikTok Artist Newsletter. They will send you once a month all the hashtags that they're going to push that month. So they'll say Jan 17th, uh, elect hashtag electronic music. That day you should put up something with the hashtag electronic music. Your reach and your visibility will be higher. So there's certain hashtags that they push. If you're an electronic artist, always use the hashtag electronic music after every post on TikTok. If you're making alternative music, it's hashtag alt music. Whatever genre you associate with, there's a hashtag for. And TikTok hashtags are super important. You should put certain hashtags after everything. There's also on the TikTok website, uh, an artist handbook, which gives you tips and tricks on how to make TikToks, what to do, but focus specifically on music artists. Really worth looking at and having a read from. TikTok are trying to steal all of Instagram's customers and they're really pushing music at the moment, as I say, is, is it designed for music? So it is a good time to start looking at it. I'm not saying it's right for everyone but it is a good time to start looking at it. So this is one example of um, a client we're working with, Amphisa Letiago. This is a way of doing her upcoming shows, right? So just a no normal video, a bit of B-reel, um, but then it comes it's like singing into the weekend. That's what people want to see on TikTok. One of the things with when you put a tour flyer up, I'm not saying it's the wrong way to announce your shows, but again, it feels like you're being sold to. It's really important to not always be selling to people. People don't like it. People know when they're being sold to. And a, a tour flyer can do that. Same as your album artwork. At some point, you've got to put it on your feed or, and put it there. But try and look at other ways to do that. Again, as I go back to the example, if you're a producer and you're in a studio, why not have a little video of you jamming and then people start watching that because they want to see the jam and then your tour dates so your release dates come up because you also kind of suckered them in a little bit because they come to look at something else but then the information comes it's something if i skip through to exhale here this event so that's that's a save the date right it starts off as a drop video from printworks then the key information comes but people start watching the video because they want to see the the drop but this this is something really important with whatever content you're trying to create there's certain things that you need to think about as well. People make a decision within three seconds as to whether they're going to watch your video. That's even why when you're running ads, you can uh, filter the ads to people that have watched three seconds, 15 seconds, and that's how you find out who's more engaged. But for, on an organic perspective, I always recommend don't have long builds up to your build up in your video. You've got to get to the best bit, the strobe light, the drop, the crowd cheering, early doors. The quicker you get there, the, the better it is. People just want to consume that content quickly. So it's super important you give them the best bit quickly. As I say, don't take a long lead up time to things because you'll lose people, they'll scroll past. So that's something to think about as well. And I would seriously recommend anyone doing events to go this route rather than like heavily artwork orientated. We, our results are so much higher when it's a bit of like organic content with key information. Uh, popping up. Talking about creating content, I'm going to go back to there. How we work with each of these artists, Adiel, Amfisa and Brina, is we have a shared uh, IFO album with each of them. They'll literally put all of their content in from the weekend. They don't even vet it. Well, it's not like as long as they're happy with it to go somewhere at some point. But we're not talking about super clean drop videos. It could be them eating pizza, whatever it is. Our team will then go through it and we come up with different content ideas based around like the B cuts and the off cuts that we get. So it might be over four weekends, there's loads of videos of hotel rooms. 
So then like one of the posts could be like tour, tour diaries, the hotel rooms are in. It's just one little video for TikTok. You could do the same thing if you're in your studio and you're recording that content. It could be the off cuts that these are the five clangers I did. Like you, you should also take, not take yourself too seriously. Or it could be five sporadic moments of, of magic. Do you know what I mean? But that's suddenly a content piece. You can then repeat that on a monthly basis and come back to that. People buy into repetitive content as well. And that's super like clear on TikTok. How many pages do you see where it's like how to dance like a Berliner? And then the next video is like five, five electronic dance moves. People buy into those, those, those same, like a lot of those big pages, basically find a formula and repeat it. There's one of my friends, he started doing like um, who sampled who tracks. It's not big on Instagram, but his, his TikTok's blown through the roof on that. Because on TikTok specifically, people, it really buys into that sort of rhythm and repetitive content. So that, that's just something to bear in mind. But also don't be afraid to test things. You're not gonna get a viral piece of content every time you post. In fact, 90% of the time you post, it's gonna do average. That, that's the truth. Like, it's super hard to get this viral content, but don't be scared of that. We work with artists on a sort of 14 day schedule. And we always say to them, two of those posts should be reactive, i.e. you just finish your gigs, so you're waiting for the content to come in and you want to post about the weekend. Everything else in that 14 day period should be proactive. There's no reason why you can't build your schedule out in advance. And the further out you build it, the better the content will be. There's nothing worse than posting on the day and or going to post on the day. You, you thought you're going to post a video, but then actually you can't find the video. Your image is the wrong shape. Like doing it last minute only makes the post worse. So try and work on a schedule and I'm going to touch on that. We use a thing called Loomly here. We find this really useful in plotting it out because as you can see, it's, it's the calendar view. For me, I find this is the best way to see what's happening, right? So on, on Loomly, we can do things so like this is giving an idea, you can put tags on it. So this is an event. So I think this is a drum code schedule, right? Um, this is going to feed. You can schedule to the platforms here if you want to. The way we use which is it for different clients varies because it's up to you how you kind of get the best out of it. But this is like, that's a month schedule planned in advance. You can then start to work out, okay, I'm missing content for this. So this is a bit I need to create. Okay, I'm going to do my monthly studio jam now. I'm going to create it and get it scheduled. This way, you know what you need to do when you need to do it. A lot of artists, you just want to be in the studio. You want to be creating music. So don't get bogged down. Don't let social media scare you. It's a necessity, but it doesn't have to be scary. It's more of a pain in the ass when you're trying to do it reactively though. You've got to be proactive with it. But if you do, if you get your schedule boxed off, you can then go in the studio for the other three weeks of the, the month. And then you just come back and it's, it's all done. There's lots of different apps for this as well. Don't feel Loomly is, is the one. It's got lots of downsides as well. To be honest, we use it mainly for looking at that calendar in that way. But then we use like create a studio, which is the inbuilt meta one for scheduling. I've put a little bit here about sort of a bit of a timeline. I will also let you guys have the presentation afterwards so you can actually take any of this information that you want. But this is kind of, I thought it might be useful talking about a release and how I'd market that. This does vary and it, it's dependent on content as well, right? One week out, there's lots of things you can do on Beatport to try and get them on side, for example. But there's certain things that they ask for. So Beatport chart, that's easy. On the day of release, put your top 10 tracks out with your new track as the number one on there. They feature a lot of emerging artists on, on the different pages. It's well worth doing, right? All you do is submit for a link, they go through, they pick stuff up and it, it could get you featured and it's gonna direct people to your track. Studio jams, yeah? If you're a producer, you're in the studio, you can do these in a number of ways. Again, you can submit these to Beatport, DJ Mag, and they do feature them. You see all sorts. If you make it interesting, people want unique content and they will put it up and support it. As a list, as I say, I'll send it round of things you can do um, on that side. Even if it doesn't get featured, you can use it on your own channels. So it's always worth trying to do it. And then you've just got content for yourself anyway, right? You should let people know in advance that something's coming. Bear in mind, it, when you post, it doesn't mean people will see it at that exact time. So if you've got a stream going live or whatever it is, it is important to let people know in advance. Sometimes it takes three days for someone to see your, your post. So don't expect people to see it at that time. Use things like the reminder tool. 
again on Instagram, on stories and on feed posts, you can set the date that something's gonna happen. It's a one click button for people. They will save it and they will get a message when that thing happens. So make sure you're doing those sort of things. Not everyone likes going live, being on camera, but you could also use that as a show. One of the things when you go live, everyone that's been online in the last hour that follows you will get a notification about it. So they, so they get a notification that you're doing something at that point. So it's good on release day to send that notification, hey, my new record's out, or hey, we're, we're gonna be at the party in an hour, or you could do it at the last, your last track of the night. These are all different ways that you could sort of um, use that functionality. This is like a content list here. Uh, as I say, it's, you can only post the artwork so many times, right? So look at other ways that you can do that. Studio Jam, uh, Drop of the Week. Um, so that's like your, uh, you playing it in the club and the drop, right? Beatport playlists, studio pictures, um, and different assets. So does anyone have any questions or stuff that they want to ask? Do you think if an artist isn't comfortable with doing their own, doing all this promotion and they rather just focus on perfecting their, their craft, do you think it makes total sense for them to employ a, a third party in, given that they're probably very like still sensitive about what, what they want their image to be? Like the marketing, marketing agencies still wrap around what the artist wants people to see. Yeah, so two, two parts to that. The, the first thing I say, I think when you're starting, you should try and do as much of it as yourself. There's so much you can learn from that. And it's more, it's important to build your own sort of networks and support groups. Every time you go to an external party, whether it's us or a PR company or whatever that might be, they're taking, it's their contacts. You're not getting the, the contacts out of that as well, right? From a PR perspective, for example, it's, it's so easy to find these contacts. If you read an article, it says who wrote the article, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you can find them. Drop them a message. This is my new track. It's out on this day. Try and establish those networks yourself. I would say it's only worth going to an agency, even whether it's us, PR agency, whatever. Once you really feel you can't do these things yourself, there's so much value in building up your own networks, whether that's email addresses for your own mailing list for a release, right? messaging artists saying here's my track do you like it if they if they like it say can i get your email address i'll be dropping you like a personal email next time we as an agency don't send out fat drop so email blasts through the companies we we let the artists that we work with select from our list the artists like 10 artists that they want want to reach out to then they personally email those artists with a personal email that personal email is super important and you're much more likely to get a response than going through some of these mailing services because these mailing services just hammer hammer demo after demo after demo out so build that network yourself as well a lot of these like a lot of these artists bigger artists they all want new tracks they all want exclusive tracks so reach out if they, if you've got something you think someone really like send it to them tell them like look this is this is ex no one else has got this this is for you i'm not going to send it to anyone else for the next three weeks whatever this is just for you They'll appreciate that. These big artists do want to have exclusive music. And also don't always send music because you want it to be signed. Send music so you can be road tested. Say that like, I think this works, like have a play around. If you're asking for them to sign it, they might not be ready for that, but they might like the track to play. And a lot of artists like uh, Afterlife, um, Inner Visions, Exhale, they won't sign the track for two years. They'll, be, they'll play it and make sure it's a banger before they sign it. So don't feel it has to be signed there and then. It's a, it's a big thing if Dixon or Amelie or whoever, to hell of us, whoever that might be, is playing your music. That will get people listening to you. You'll get other people coming to you asking for tracks you, and it will snowball. So sorry to come back to your question. You don't necessarily need to go to an agency for those things. In terms of the content perspective, someone like Sweely, good person to look at, his social media on Instagram, is literally vinyls spinning, right? Him putting his tracks in the turntable. Not really what you should do on Instagram, but he's got 50,000 followers, right? Because that's his thing. It, he's like, I'm just into music. I just want people to see my music. They don't need a selfie. If that's your thing, it takes time, but stick to it. This is what I mean about brand and narrative. Stick to your narrative, stick to your brand, but you've got to be consistent with what you do. How does the paid promotion on Instagram works properly and can benefit you? How we can... 
work around it. Is it really important to do paid promotion? Is this is, yeah, it's a really good question. One of the things you'll find is you'll get a message from Instagram or Facebook saying this post is doing really well, boost it to reach this. One thing they're really good at is making you spend money. It is true, if that post is doing well, it could be worth, could we be worth boosting or, or putting out there. It is the algorithm saying to do that. As an ads ag agency, when we're running ads, we don't put money on every single post. We only put uh, money on posts that have performed well. So we'll normally run our ads a week behind, if that makes sense. So the, the best post from the week before, we'll look at, okay, this one performed really well. So let's put a bit of money on that because you've kind of done the A-B testing. You've, you've seen what people like. Okay, we can put more money on it. We're gonna see the same results. The first thing I say, don't put money on it as soon as you post. If it's not doing well, don't worry about it. Move on to the next post. If that does well, okay, maybe I'm gonna put a little bit of money on that. The second thing I'd say, is again, and this is where to kind of counter, counteract what I said before, ads are a little bit complicated. It's really important, like they will try and serve you an ad for the lowest price and the cheapest like or cheapest view, which isn't necessarily gonna mean you're gonna sell more records or get sell more tickets. If they're selling it to someone in Peru, that's not really useful if your show's in London. How you target those ads, I would say it's better to have a slightly higher cost, but it's a real fan. So, okay, realistically, most of my shows are gonna be in London this year. So I'm just gonna serve ads to London. It might be a little bit more expensive, but these are the people that are gonna come to your show or buy your, like buying the music slightly different, but try and, try and be really accurate with your ads as well. Putting interests in and audiences is super important as well. You've got to try and make it as accurate as possible. And um, the social media platforms reward accuracy as well. They don't like people seeing ads that aren't relevant. It pisses people off and they leave the platform. So like you, you will see a benefit from that. Hi, uh, thanks for taking the time to talk with us. I no uh, found this very helpful. Um, so do you have a recommendation for creating content and I guess how to split your time, like how much time you should be devoting to like making music as a producer and you know, how much time you should spend editing videos and maybe an easy way to go about all of that. So it's not, doesn't become a stressful yeah. thing that you have to worry about. That, that's a really important question as well. You're, you're all producers, right? You're all here to make music. You're not here to be influencers. And that's really important. Don't, as I say, don't let social media take over from what you're there to do in the first place, which is make your music or put on your parties. That is the most important thing, right? If social media overtakes that, that's not what you signed up for. So that, that's the first thing. Don't let it overtake your life. It's important, but it's not the be all and end all. People like Helena Huff don't even have um, social media, but they, they sell 5,000 tickets, right? So it's not, it's not essential, but it is, is important. I think the best thing about allocating your time, as I say, try and sit down and do that. Okay, this is what my next 14 days looks like. I'm gonna do three posts this week, two next week. Just working out what those are. You don't then have to build that content there and then, but you, you might spend 30 minutes working it out, briefing what you wanna do. When you sit down next time to produce the content, you're just gonna jump into it. Okay, right, this, this week I'm gonna recommend my five top tracks or five things that I've been digging that no one else knows, yeah? So then when you go to the studio and you're going through your records, you go, okay, shit, I need to pick out five tracks for that video. You can then just smash it out really quick. You'll find if you, like sitting down, planning that schedule will make producing the content much quicker as well when it comes to it, because you know what you're doing. Take it like spending one hour planning two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, means you're not gonna sit down four or five times over the month to do that as well. I think that's really important. You know, you were talking about a uh, A B testing and mate like waiting a week to see if a post is successful before boosting it. Do you reckon the same could be said about your you as an artist? Like before before you decide to put start to put energy into marketing, promotion and networking, etc. Do you think it's worth to just have it on the internet and see if anyone actually digs it? before putting effort into promoting it. Because even if, if, if no one's taking it up and then you start promoting it, it's kind of hard to tell the how organic it yeah. actually is. Um, 
is a little bit complicated if you're gonna give it to a label to release if we're talking about a track because once it's out there they can't monetize it so if you put it up for free download for example they're not gonna they're not gonna sign that track but this kind of comes into the network thing right if you send it to artists that your friends get them to play it in their sets play it in your set if you're doing radio mixes it put it in there see if that's that's where you can see how it feels and how people react to it that's i guess that could be your a b test giving it to artists as i say giving it to other artists to play out that that can be an a b test and this is why i say don't think you have to have like once the record's finished it doesn't have to be signed straight away you can sit on things and and test them as, as you want go back to them that is important as i say it's a little bit complicated with a record though because once it is out there for free download our labels won't sign it or it's, it's very rare that they will so I wouldn't, I wouldn't whack it up like that, but there is nothing wrong with giving it to your art, other artists and friends to, to play. Um, there, there's no issue with that. Cool, we'll finish it there then. Thanks very much for listening guys. Thank you. Thank you.